It's the last day of the semi-finals. I really am desperate to get into the finals. These celebrities are all passionate about food. I want to... I just want to win. I want to win. We're looking for that exceptional cooking style. Someone who's more than just a good home cook. Someone with that extra something special. If I go home today, I will be absolutely devastated. These four celebrities have been through the toughest culinary challenges of their lives. But for one of them, today will be the end of their journey. Today means so much to me because if I go home, oh, I'll be so devastated. I need to be in the final. If I'm not in the final, I can't win. I want it badly, I really do. I am nervous, scared, excited, determined. I have been dreading this day for a long time, and it's finally here. Today, they only have one cooking challenge to impress three of the most revered food critics in the country. Those critics have no idea where our contestants started from. They have no idea about the journey they've been on. All they care about is the plates of food that are going to be presented in front of them today. It's important that all four of them raise their game. Well, you have come a long way, and it has been a great adventure. The deal is, we have three final places. This is our last semi-final, and we're going to lose one of you. Ladies and gentlemen, you cook like you've never cooked before. Good luck. Let's cook. The contestants have just an hour and a half to cook a two-course meal of their own design. Throughout the competition, Lewis has consistently impressed with his flavours. There was no way in the world that those people didn't enjoy that dish because it was fantastic. I think it tastes delicious. I, I really do. Get it? Oh, good. <laughs> we love Lewis's food because it's big on flavour, it's big on portions. But his technical ability lets him down. It looks like something a seven-year-old would do. Which Lewis are we going to get today? The really comfortable cook or the guy who's really scared, looking at a recipe, thinking, this isn't my food at all and I can't do it? For the critics, I need to be brilliant. And uh, not unless we'll do. To prove his aptitude in the kitchen, he's cooking tuna steak for a starter, followed by salmon en croute. What's the trickiest part of this menu for you? It's probably going to be timings, I think, yeah. And, and, and with the salmon getting the pasty right, then hope that I get it out bang on time. You told us once that you were inspired by your father's cookery. Yeah, because he, my dad took great pleasure in people enjoying what he cooked, you know? That, that, that's my aim. If you do manage to get through to a final, how will you feel? I'd even give you two guys a kiss. <laughs> Lewis, once again, has given himself so much work to do. That's a big piece of salmon cooked in pastry with all those flavours. Will it be ready for service? Andy started the competition as a strong contender. I mean, that's incredible. Oh, brilliant, thank you. Where would you like us to send your MasterChef title in? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen John and Greg as happy with my cooking as they were on the first day. It's kind of frightening, because have I been going downwards, really, and not upwards? I don't know. But he battles to balance flavour with technical brilliance. The dish you've made needs more spice, needs more heat, just to bring it alive. And he's a driven man. He just needs to cook food that we really want to eat, not just look at. Today, he's determined to pack flavour into his main course of lamb medallions and a white chocolate mousse dessert. Andy, I looked down at your bench and there seems very few ingredients. More ingredients doesn't mean more taste. So this one is all about the taste. This is the last of the semi-finals and today we are going to lose one of you. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you're safe? Not at all, not in the slightest. Um, I thought I was doing well until the last task and I lost all my confidence because I don't think, I, th uh, I don't know, 
I can't even talk, I'm so nervous. I'm really scared about today. All I know is I've got to cook this dish to perfection. Now he's gonna concentrate on his main course. Will he get that full of flavour? Will it come from being just lamb and cabbage to something really beautiful? Mark has proved he's a passionate cook who can produce delicious plates of food. Mark, that's the best thing you've cooked for us. That, for me, is seriously impressive. Thank you. But under pressure, he lacks attention to detail. Mark's issue had to be presentational. He's throwing too many things on a plate. It just isn't clean enough. Mark's a survivor. He pulls stuff out of the bag. He's just got to make it look really good. Today is D-Day, so the nerves are extra strong. I mean, my stomach's turning over now, just thinking about it. To secure his place in the final, he's cooking a Tuscan bean soup, followed by seared tuna. Is this the food you love? I love Tuscan bean soup, and then the light tuna afterwards, I think, are just nice, different taste on the palate, so I'm hoping that combination's gonna work. And how do you feel about cooking for restaurant critics? Um, I'm just cooking for people, and I'm going to cook to the best of my ability, and hopefully that'll be good enough. What do you think that you have to do today, Mark, to secure your place to finalists? I have to cook perfectly. My presentation is paramount to me. And if you do go through, if you do oh. become a finalist? I'll be on cloud cuckoo land. Tuna with a tapenade, nice idea. But we've got great big vegetables as big as my fist on there, and we know Mark has presentation problems. Novice cook Liz eats out a lot, which has helped fine-tune her natural palate. Your duck is cooked perfectly. Whether that's by fault or by chance, I'm not quite sure. I'm really pleased. Really? Yeah, I'm really pleased. But will her inexperience be her undoing? Does it look good? I think that's what it is, you know, not as cooked. I want to see you do more than food we can eat with a spoon. OK. She now has to elevate her food. She has to take her food up one more step. I'm going to go for it, all or nothing, really. To demonstrate a broadening repertoire, Liz is cooking chilli squid, followed by lamb and cheesy mash. What does this all mean to you, Liz? <sighs> I don't know. Uh, it, means, it means everything to me. I mean, honestly, Nothing has been this important for a very long time, to be quite honest. I'm absolutely petrified. Why are you so frightened? Just critics. I mean, you know, I read half of the things that they print, so, you know, and go by what they say, so I'm, I'm absolutely just not looking forward to this at all. Why do you want to go to the final so much, Liz? Because it's something... I've just never done this before, and I've discovered this totally different world, which I absolutely adore, and, and I, don't, I don't want to leave it quite yet. <laughs> I do like the idea of Lizzie's squid, avocado, chilli, tomato, South America, yeah. But I don't know where she's going with that lamb at all. Lamb and onion sauce, all right. And then cheesy mashed potato. It's not working, Liz. There's 20 minutes before service and the critics arrive. Charles Campion has been critiquing restaurant food for over 20 years currently writing for The Evening Standard and The Independent. Kate Spicer is known for her acerbic opinion and searing honesty in The Times. And Jay Rayner has been writing reviews in The Observer for nearly 10 years. Lewis, you got eight minutes. OK. Your first course. You happy with that? Yeah. It's been better. Lewis, yeah. three minutes. Make sure it looks nice, Lewis, huh? There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Lewis has made seared sesame tuna steak with a bolotti bean and celery stew. I think the beans dish is, is kind of the best bit, really, because there's a slight crunch left in the celery and uh, the softness of the beans, it works really quite well together. Very nice, very savoury, strong peppery end, all the things I like. It's lovely stuff. 
You've got 15 minutes, clean yourself down, look what you've got to do, and get the rest of your garnishes on and go from there. Thank you. How long until that salmon comes out, Lewis? Another couple of minutes. Two minutes, that's it? Two minutes, yeah. One minute. Take, take it, take it. That's got to go, take it, yeah. Thank you. Lewis has gone all out with a dish of salmon on croute with an apple, fennel and sauerkraut filling served with horseradish mousse and mange too. I don't know whether I've got it, whether I've got it bang on. I don't know. It's raw in the middle. And the pastry is very soggy and... But the pastry is undercooked. Yeah. It's salmon on floppy raw pastry, really. Salmon on sog. Salmon on sog. Mm. The horseradish mousse is one of the nastiest things I've had for a long time. I don't think you should be able to slice a mousse. The pastry's underdone, the salmon's underdone, the mixture of things underneath the salmon doesn't work, and the horseradish mousse probably could be categorised as a weapon of mass destruction if it was in the wrong hands. I don't know, I just don't feel as though it's my best for some reason. I gave it my best, but I don't know. I don't know. Just doesn't... Andy's next with his lamb main dish. You've got about four minutes before you start the really plate, haven't you? Yeah. Uh. We want it now, like yeah. right now. Go. Thank you. Has Andy got those all-important flavours into his lamb medallions with stir-fried cabbage, bacon and carrots, and new potatoes? That cabbage is very nice indeed. It doesn't need the carrots. I, th I, th I think this is really not, not a bad dish at all. The question mark would actually be over the choice of cut mm. that he's gone for. I think for a good cut of meat, you need to have a good ribbon of fat. Absolutely. Mm. No, no, I'd... I... You need the fat for the flavour, of course. Exactly. And um, with a piece of meat like this, you're going to need to do everything you can to get flavour into it, which involves, you know, salt mm. and butter. I think he's done a pretty good job. I mm. mean, the potatoes are cooked right. The cabbage is very nice. And it's just a pity that the meat has come out as the poor relation, really. The idea behind my dessert is it looks like tea and biscuits. I can't tell whether I'm going to garnish it or not because I haven't rehearsed it with a garnish, so I don't know whether it works with a garnish. Andy, <clears throat> it's right staring at it. You've got a minute to get it out. That's my test. Garnish or no garnish? I don't like garnish. I'm not putting garnish on. Trusting my instincts. <laughs> Whatever you do, get it out. After serving his first two desserts, Andy changes his mind about the chocolate garnish. Would you like some chocolate shavings? Yes, I'd love some. Thank you. Andy served up white chocolate and mint mousse with a shortbread biscuit. Mm. Super light. Nice and short. It's a good flavour and it's a good texture. It's very smooth. Biscuits, 35 seconds overbaked, but apart from that, it's uh, very nice and light. I think this is almost restaurant standard. I could imagine eating this in a restaurant. I'm not sure I'd grumble in the slightest. Mm. I'm not saying something. Mm. He knew what effect he wanted to get and he delivered. Yeah. Clever boy. The relief is it's done. I can't do any more. I've done it. The food went out. It went out on time. <laughs> You are the most relaxed I've ever seen you. I'm not inside, I'm a turmoil inside. 
but, but it just means so much to me, and I can't, I can't make a mistake. One minute. One minute. One minute, Mark. Mark, take it, mate. Thank Go. You. Mark's made Tuscan bean soup with truffle oil and parmesan. I quite like it. There's some quite nice little bits of bacon, big chunks of carrot, beans. It's a sound homemade soup. That's what it is. It's the sort of thing we could all aspire to. And just visually as well, there's, there's lots to look at and it's lots of lovely vegetables. I would happily eat a whole bowl of this. It's just a nice big bowl full of stuff. Right, what am I doing? E-I-O. That's it, it needs to go, Mark. Okay. I've done my best, and I just hope it's good enough. Has he managed to perfectly cook his seared tuna steak, fried courgette and fennel, and black olive and caper tapenade? I don't understand where the, where the pleasure is in eating a piece of fish like this. It's chewy. It's not giving me a great deal of flavour. The texture of it is not pleasant to eat. At least give me enough tapenade to get through the whole of my tuna steak. This sort of rabbit-dropping school of presentation, I don't care for at all. And if you're going to char-grill the vegetables, don't then char-burn them. Half of them are undercooked and half of them are completely cindered. There is no doubt that, with simplicity, there's nowhere to hide. So if you're going to do simple food, you have to do it really well. And no, he's not done it really, really well. Um, it's going to be agony now, waiting to get a decision. Um, I feel a sense of relief now I've finished the cooking because it's out of my hands now. I can't, I can't do anything about it. Next. For Liz to prove she's got what it takes to get through, she must sear her delicate squid to perfection. Liz, you've got four minutes. Thanks. Liz, you've got a minute, all right? So as soon as that's on, get those plates out, please. Oh, I've just got lemon juice in the court. Oh, my God. Right, let's, let's go. go, let's go, let's go, let's go. go. Liz has made chili fried squid served with a fresh avocado salsa. That's a pretty measly portion of squid, isn't it? What she lacks in squid, she's made up for in raw onion, though. Mmm. <laughs> raw onion is not the flavour you would immediately need with squid, is it? Raw onion. It's very tender. Think about how bouncy squid can be. But this is pointless exercise in raw vegetables. Mm. The squid has been accurately cooked. After that, you can't say very much nice about the dish. No. Liz must now impress with her main course. I know you're running 100 miles an hour, but you've now got 15 minutes, OK? Got five minutes, Liz. Oh. But her mashed potato is too runny so she adds more cheese, hoping to bind it. <laughs> gotta go, Liz, gotta go. Thank you. Oh, my God. 
I'm so exhausted. God, that was so hard. I just feel, I feel so stupid crying, but it's so, like, it, it, it was nerves. Nerves, like, absolutely crippled me then. Liz's hopes rest on her lamb cutlets with sweet onion jus, cheesy mash, and a roasted courgette. I would go as far as to say, that, you know, the various meat things we've had today, that's a, this is the best. I think the meat's the star turn of it, and the jus with the lamb is very good. My problem is the mashed potato. I, I'm a terrific fan of mashed potato. I love mashed potato. And I can't bring myself to like this at all. I was hoping for something really kind of elastic rather than this, which is sort of just a bit gloopy. The curious thing is the difficult things, which is the meat cookery, the jus to go with it, she's got right. Mm. The stuff that should be easy, she's got wrong. Well, this one's got things wrong with it. It's actually the one I'd like to sit down and finish the whole plate. I've really worked hard on that. That's the hardest I've ever worked, I think. The hardest I've ever worked. And the nerves were crippling me. I can't believe I kept it together. All four contestants can do nothing more. Your first one up today was Lewis. The actual uh, beans and celery thing on the side was quite nice, actually, but it, it didn't really live with the fish for me, you know. Some of the flavours were really bizarre. It was edible. I'm not saying it was disgusting, it was edible. Not entirely edible, for there was the horseradish mousse. If I ruled the world, Lewis would be in prison right now for the horseradish mousse. It's out of my hands now, and um, you left just feeling... I've had, was it enough? We move on from Lewis and we move to Andy. I mean, I thought his food was pretty good. Very honest, not too overcomplicated. I thought both of Andy's dishes were incredibly well considered. However, there was a slight lack of passion in that first dish because there seemed to be a real lack of anything sinful or sexy, like a bit of salt or a bit of butter. But then you get to his pudding and actually that was a bit sexy, really, wasn't it? That white chocolate and mint mousse. I just can't believe that in, like, a couple of hours we're going to know who's in the final. It's, it's so weird. I've, I've done everything I can do. I can't do any more, anything else. That's so weird. Mark's bowl of uh, Tuscan bean soup. Um, it was a very nice bowl of soup. And then the main course, there was this really leathery piece of tuna and then there was this sort of green vinegary thing going on in the corner of the plate. And I just thought, you know, why, why have you done this? It's just not enjoyable to eat. <sighs> I'm just glad it's done. Oh. I just want to, I want to be in the final now. What about Liz? Liz's salsa was just an unnecessary pile of rather sharp, raw vegetables. And then I thought her main course had a lot of love in it. It was a big, hearty plate of food. And it was a plate of food you could get stuck into and enjoy right to the end. I hated the potato. The texture was wrong and it looked like a cow pat. But the lamb itself was very, very good, and so was the jus. I just, oh, I just like to know and, and either go home or stay. This is the last semi-final, and we have to now make our decision. We're going to lose one of them and take with us three finalists. For me today, Andy finally wore his heart on his sleeve. We went up to talk to him, and he was panicking because he doesn't necessarily deliver food with flavour. Andy does deliver great-looking plates of food, but he's not moving along flavour-wise. I want to see a little bit more heart and soul in his food. I do. Well, there were faults today with Liz's food. It wasn't cooking by numbers. That's impressive. She's moving fast. Liz does have a natural touch. She has a cookery flair. I think she is improving as a cook much faster than anybody else. I've wanted her to push herself a little bit further. It looks like she is to me. Lewis's food is good enough if he starts to believe in himself. But did Lewis do enough today to solidify his place in the final? Every now and again, Lewis delivers and delivers really big style on flavour, and he did it again today with those beans. We know that Mark can cook, but sometimes when the pressure mounts up, he does fall apart. Mark has so much passion, so much love for the task, and although he trips up, he always picks himself up, dusts himself down, and attempts every single task with as much energy as he did the last one. All four of them have got strengths. 
All four of them have got weaknesses. Okay, Mr. Wallace, it's time to make a decision. This is always very, very tough because you four have worked very, very hard indeed. Whatever happens today, I think you guys should be extremely proud. The person going home is Lewis. MasterChef has been a real journey. You know, it's frightening, it's scary, it's ecstatic, it's it's exhilarating. It's all the all your senses are like fired up. It's just been a buzz, and, and it's one that I'm gonna you know find hard to come down off. Actually, you know what I mean? Ah, oh, what a competition, eh? Congratulations. I'm actually made up, but. Not to look at me, you wouldn't think so, but I am. It's the best thing I've ever done in my life, and it's awesome. <laughs> I am ecstatic, absolutely ecstatic. I just, I'm so surprised and so shocked. To get to, <laughs> to, get to the final, Especially because I didn't think I would, but I'm here now. That's it. I've got to go all the way. Yes! <laughs> One of us is going to win. Andy, Mark, and Liz will be back for the finals. Oh, there's bangs just say, going we're up everywhere, it's magic. Towards the night. The holiday sauce is never going to happen. Well, we've got to do it. We've got to do it. Only one of them can be crowned Celebrity MasterChef champion. The heat is absolutely intense. I can't do this. I completely and utterly want to cry. <sighs>